Hello. My name is Matthew Leffler, the armchair attorney, and this is Closing Arguments. Today is the final day for the comment period on the proposed rule to ban non-competition agreements. After today, comments end, and the final rule gets put in place. Now, I have been talking about non-competition agreements ad nauseum, but I haven't made a public comment. I've talked about it a lot in public, but I haven't made anything official. This is my public comment, both as an individual and as an attorney. As an individual, I do not like non-competition agreements. They are difficult to maneuver around. They follow you anywhere you go. They're pervasive in our entire workforce. Again, 30 million people, one in five workers, are bound by a non-competition agreement. They limit mobility. They keep wages low. And ultimately, it makes it more difficult to do the thing you're trained to do. So, as an individual, I do not like non-competition agreements. But let's move to my lawyer perspective. I love non-competition agreements. I love using contracts to lock people out of doing things that my client does not want them to do. Non-competition agreements are an important way to remove competition from any industry. To starve your competitors of talent is something that is very difficult to achieve unless you use non-competition agreements. The fact that they are so pervasive simply tells you one thing. They work. You, when you're presented with a non-competition agreement, have no idea what you're signing. You have no idea how many hours went into drafting that document to make sure that you will not damage your soon-to-be ex-employer. Post-employment restrictive covenants, non-competition, non-solicitation, non-disparagement, non-disclosures, follow you after you leave. And when you get presented with these things, you're not sure what you're getting into. You may say, is this an employment contract? No, no, no. No. You are not signing an employment contract. You are at will. You go when we feel that you need to go. Whether that's because you choose to leave, we have a reduction in workforce, or we terminate you for cause, that document follows you to anywhere you go. And chances are, we're not going to seek to enforce those. We're not going to go ahead and ruin your life simply because you went to a new company. But we want the option to do that. We, as employers and lawyers representing employers, want to make sure that we protect our client. And if our client is worried about competition from great staff or high-level folks, mid-level folks, or even entry-level folks, we are going to do our best to effectuate that client's goal. We are fiduciaries. What reason do you think the FTC wants to get involved with post-employment restrictive covenants like non-competes? What gives them the authority to reach into private contractual matters between employers and workers? Each state regulates employment contracts. Each state makes their own rules on non-competition non-disclosures, non-disparagements, and non-solicitations. Why in the world do we need the federal government to come in and restrict employers' right to limit their workers' ability to earn a living after they leave? Let the employees negotiate. Let them take different jobs. Have them move to states that ban non-competition agreements. You have to understand these documents are written to trick you, and it will trick you, even if you're one of the most sophisticated people around. When you sign a non-competition agreement, you best expect we're going to seek to enforce that to the full ability of the law, 
And if you're unable to enforce that non-compete because it's too broad, too long, or too geographically expansive, we allow blue penciling, which means the judge can rewrite the non-compete to make it valid in the place that's currently being sought enforced. 30 million Americans. Do you honestly believe that companies that use non-competes are prepared to send out 30 million individualized notifications that the non-compete is gone? Absolutely not. The industry did one thing. We paused. We extended the comment period. The moment that final rule comes out, industry will stop it. They will do everything that they can to stop it. And as a lawyer who represents businesses, that's okay with me. As a lawyer, I love using contracts to lock you into a trap that you don't see coming. You join a company and you're excited, you're passionate, you can't wait. Everything looks beautiful with rose-colored glasses. But when things sour, and they often do, your ability to do something that competes with me is limited. We can do enormous damage to you and your family. When we seek to enforce a non-competition agreement, we want one thing. You to be fired. And we want our attorney's fees for having to go out to court to seek your termination. And we look at your current employer and we say, you are tortiously interfering with a contract between me and my former worker. You will also be sued. That's what it's designed to do. You don't like it? Don't sign the non-competition agreement. You do like it? Welcome to the club. If you think the federal government's going to come in here and save you because you made a bad deal, you're mistaken. You're mistaken. FTC, I applaud them for trying to do this. It's interesting. Good for them. But here's the deal. Non-competes aren't going anywhere. If you want them to truly go away, your call to action is to look at the Workforce Mobility Act. An act of Congress can stop non-competition agreements. I don't think FTC can. But 15,000 of you, 15,000 of you made comments on the FTC's proposed rule banning non-competes. It's a lot of people, but it's not the 30 million that are bound by them because the vast majority of people who are bound by non-competes simply do not know what it means or they don't care. Selective enforcement. Selective enforcement is the idea that a company or a regulator or a legal enforcement entity decides when they want to pursue a claim. Most of the time, people simply don't do anything. We don't care what you do when you leave the company. Unless we do. And if we do, we get a contract. So there you have it. The closing argument. Should the federal government step in between the private contracts between workers and in hiring entities? Or do we trust that individuals have the ability to read a document and say yes or no? That's the question. Do you need more regulation or less? Do you need more education or less? Here's the thing you have to understand. These documents are written by people like me. Hired guns whose entire job is to put their client's interest ahead of just about everything. And if you want to get in the way between a lawyer and the client, it's a very tough path to walk. Personally, I don't like non-competes. I think it's anti-American to make it so that you can't do your trade in the place that you want to do it. But I see the other side. You have the ability as an individual to negotiate documents or choose not to sign them. And when you do, you're bound by them. You don't go to your mortgage company and say, hey, I didn't understand this contract. Can we get rid of it? So that's my thoughts on non-competition agreements. Good, bad, ugly, 
and indifferent. Have a great day.